Cause. <laughs> Best of Cause. <laughs> it's PowerWorks time. It is podcast time. We're talking cars. Glenn Powers here. We are at PowerWorks Garage. And we're going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's been a while since we've sat down. Although, in podcast world, you've noticed no break. Nobody knows. <laughs> we're so prolific. <laughs> so prolific through the through the normal part of the year. So it's... Uh, you Summer know. doesn't affect us too much, does it? Not really. Not really. Yeah, you were at Auto Mechanica. Yeah. How was it? Not great this year. Oh, no. The footfall didn't That's seem... not what I wanted to hear. No, I mean, there was a lot of interesting stuff I'm talking about from, from you know, yeah. uh, from their point of view. So Auto Mechanica, for anyone who's listening, it's, it's a trade show geared towards the automotive industry. Yeah, and Messer Frankfurt that, that run it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and and this is this is a big deal. Yeah, it was um, obviously huge, vast World yeah. Trade Center. And, uh, you know, it was, me and DJ had done a, uh, High Rocks fitness event there at the start of September and obviously you know you walk in and you just see how how amazing it is that they turn those just what is just a warehouse which yeah. you appreciate when we were doing the High Rocks thing into like well lit <laughs> you know there's advertising hoardings and, and yeah, yeah. The, there's all of the booths and everything it's, it's a massive massive thing that they put up run and take down in the space of a week. So a great effort, and logistically it was fantastic, but the footfall didn't seem oh, really? the same. And, you know, they got a bit of a pit stop challenge where they've got a, a caddy van on a, on a scissor lift, and it was like, how quick can you change four tyres? And yeah. if me and DJ had gone together, we'd have definitely done that because of the competitive nature of us. But, you know, it, it, there was nobody even taking part in it. And oh, man. It just didn't seem, I mean, I went with Pete, uh, Peter Eagle from Borgenbeck, the technical director. Yep, yep. And we went to meet the guys in the factory that okay. were uh, that produce our air suspension. So we've started. We've just we've finished, and now we're we've launched the full range of air suspension for the Land Rover models. Nice. I saw. I saw. It. Speaking of that, I saw the other day at a set of lights. I was with the wife in car, and I saw. Uh, maybe an LR4 with air suspension mm. and the front it's of down. the air, it, it was not. And I went, oh, that must be a real pain to drive. Yeah, bouncing all over yeah. the place. Yeah. One of the problems with the Land Rover stuff, the reason we went there first is that they're, they're, well, you could almost use the word ubiquitous, can't you, for describing Land Rovers here. But the use of a Land Rover, typically a lot of people will still use them off-road here. Right. So easy to drive in the desert. And there's a huge owners club on facebook and other platforms where people are using them all throughout the winter so what they'll do is they'll put oversized tires and different wheels to to give them a bit of lift and, and give them more traction in the sand when they let the tire pressure down the problem with that is that when your air suspension fails you don't have the same clearance in the wheel arch <laughs> yeah. so then people just cannot drive them right so it becomes not just because they're not the most expensive air suspension even mm. from the Oh, agency really? they're not the most expensive if you could put them next to a volkswagen group or a mercedes or you know they're, they're not in that category but when you're in the the depths of the desert yeah. and you get stuck because you can't rotate the wheels because they're stuck in the wheel arch that's an expensive recovery and i work for AAA, and that's what we used to do and it ain't cheap yeah. Yeah. sending the you know the skip loader or the six by six out into the desert to lift you off the sand and, and bring you out. So, you know, there's that to do. Plus there's a damage done by actually the fact that you've already tried to drive it and the wheels jammed in the wheel well. Right. So you've got all of that damage plus the fact, well, the initial fault was the air suspension. Yeah. So it can be quite expensive. And yeah, we, we did, with the support of the Land Rover Owners Club here, we tested about four full sets. Oh, okay. And... We had fantastic feedback from them. In fact, the stage three testing that we did when we put them on the cars, at no point have we had, and there was there was no development from that stage. A lot of the times, you'll design a part, it gets tested in a factory, and then it will be improved, and then the price point will be agreed, and then it will be changed to a meter price point, and then it goes onto the cars, and then there's a problem, so we fix that. We had no problems with it. Wow. And to be fair, Pete did say 
that his purchasing um, director in the UK said that these this factory was the best of the best. So you and it was going to be good. Went to Auto Mechanica. That was the main mission. Okay. We went there. Um, they'd invited me on as the into the premium club, which, f- to all intents and purposes, from what I could understand, just gave me a day's free parking, which okay. I didn't use anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'm not queuing to park, even if it's free. And so we, we parked over and walked over the bridge. But there was the academy thing that we've done before. Yeah. Again, nobody in there. And it's like, it needs to be more interactive. Yeah. It was pretty interactive when we did it. Yeah, yeah. we did it. And there was a lot of people sat listening to us yeah. talk. People were standing in the, ho- in, yeah, in yeah, the walkway. Yeah, it was quite busy, wasn't it? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it need, it needs a bit of a, a shuffle now because... You Maybe know, it's you, post-COVID. They're they're getting back into their game. Yeah, and, but I went last year and it was all right. Even the gifts, like this pen. DJ's just complimented the pen and then mm-hmm. moaned at me because I didn't grab him one. But DJ went last year and when I'd been, I'd forgotten about it, to be honest, and Pete had reminded me we had a meeting so we went on the last day um and so dj never got time to go but you know there, there wasn't there wasn't really the it the, you go around there and it's sometimes like you get accosted almost by the people yeah, on the stands yeah. you know you come to, there's none of that either now maybe it was the fatigue of the third day and what yeah. have you but that's the day to do your business yeah um i it, it was a little bit Worrying, and I think it's something that probably mirrors where the motor industry is as a whole. Actually, people don't really know where they where we're going with it. We we, I sent you the, you sent me that wonderful podcast podcast Patrick Beck David podcast where it, I like his stuff, um, but that was really interesting. The first twenty minutes they were talking about the auto union strike in the U.S. Well, I mean, and when you start looking at what what the UAW is asking for. And you know, we're talking, you know, forty percent wage increase, reduced work hours. Yeah. I look. I grew up in Ajax, Ontario, which is, you know, two towns over from Oshawa. Yeah. In Canada, big GM line. Yeah, big I knew, GM plant. Yeah. I knew lots of people who worked at GM, and most you know, a lot of the GM stuff here is all Canadian. You know, and they, you know, they 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 were getting paid well then. It was monotonous. There was a lot of work uh, assembly line injury repetitive motion injuries yep. and stuff but you know then they got hammered with evs and those lines a lot of those lines got cut there and the, you know that really threw oshawa mm. into a spin they've brought back some things it's it, it some sometimes i know i'm gonna win no uaw friends here but sometimes i wonder if the united auto workers aren't just trying to revive a little bit of the glory days yeah which unfortunately are gone you know, and I kind of agree with with what what they say that the CEO, I forget the lady's name, apologies, um, the joys of Google, but she, she was uh, Mary Barra. That's right. So she she got paid something like ninety three million dollars yeah. yeah. in a year, right? Yeah. Now that was something like a. 200 or whatever percent don't quote me but there was a it was a huge huge increase on the on the on the previous payment that she'd had so on the face of it numbers on a page you would think and you'd be fair to think in a in a liberal socialist maybe society you'd be like okay well that she she's had more so yeah. why haven't we had more unfortunately the fact is if they work this year and make no money they'll still get paid their salary. She won't get anything because she'll be paid based on performance. There, there's now, a, there's an interesting, an interesting piece just uh, when we're talking about money. Yeah. GM. Oh no, sorry. I think it's Chrysler actually. Uh, what do they call uh, themselves? Uh, Stellantis. Is Stellantis. It, now, yeah. it could, it could be GM. It could be Chrysler. I can't, you know what? I can't, I just read it yesterday and I was, I was in passing and I, I actually, it's right here. Hold on. There's a link. Yeah, but live on on action here. I put the link in because like, oh, it's GM. GM just secured a new six billion dollar credit line. Nice, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> nice. And they're saying the strike has cost them two hundred million already. One of the one of the other things with this is that, that again, it gets quite political really quickly. It's yes. become a political issue, yeah. and it's always going to be when it's. But but they were bailed out, weren't they? Yes. Ford wasn't. Ford was. Ford weren't. No, 
But, but the other ones, yeah, yeah, bailed out. And it's like, come on, guys. Yeah. As, as soon as you get that situation where you've bailed people out and the, the, the men and women on the lines have done their job for you, that, 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 yeah. that's a challenge. Yeah, we, that, we, we had it in the UK with, with the nurses and they, they, I think they went on strike because they wanted a 35% pay increase. Now, I think t- traditionally, and I've, I've known and do know a few people that are nurses in the UK, I think traditionally there was always an annual one or two percent pay rise that was just a given. Um, but where where are they going to get thirty five percent from? So you might I, as well ask for two hundred percent. Might as well because who's going to be able to buy because those cars? You, yeah. So I don't know where I don't know where. And look, also, and, and Ford we've talked about before with the selling incomplete cars with the will retrofit things when they come in stock. So they've got nothing to sell anyway. The building cars, I mean, I don't know. I'm not involved with the union. I'm not involved with this particular union, that's for sure. I'm not in the country. I don't, you know, you talk, the, the, the phrase, the Rust Belt in America and the whole, you know, mythology almost now about Detroit and what it was like there. Obviously, it's something that's passed me by. But, you know, I think people have to realize there's got to be a different, attack here yeah. and and we if, gotta start thinking differently yeah and and maybe it's a matter of okay well i'm gonna say i want more money but i am gonna say i'm willing to train to do evs instead yeah. of saying yeah. no i make or, engines or you know whatever they're working on in the background because yeah. i'm sure there's there you know we we drone on about it about it about it it's, yeah. it's hydrogen yeah 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 but you you got to know that all the major car companies are looking at hydrogen there's no question yeah. in my mind they're, yeah we're going to milk electricity as long as we can just like we're milking internal combustion well, engines. As soon as look, as soon again political, but as soon as the um, as soon as the, the the fossil fuel industry gets into hydrogen production, yeah. which you still need electricity and energy to do <laughs> exactly. anyway, exactly. Uh, unless you're going to go and scoop it out of the sun, which is probably quite hard. Yeah, Elon Musk yeah. is trying to figure that out <laughs> at this moment. Um, you know, then I'm sure hydrogen will come online because people can make money out of it. And like we've said before. I, I personally, it's not ideal, but I do not care who gets rich out of it yeah. if it's the right thing to do. I exactly. think it's, exactly. and I think it'll be a benefit to everybody. So they'll get, but the, this, this, as I say, auto mechanica sort of the, the auto union strike in America, the US. Were they talking about it there? No, but it just sort of, when you sort of think about everything that's gone, yeah. and you think this place is dead and there's not much happening and nobody's got any enthusiasm and there's yeah. nobody wanting to do de- de- deals and everyone's on strike in the North American Auto Workers Union and you just think, what's happening to the industry? What's yeah. going on? What do we do? We use cars are three times more expensive than they were yeah. relatively th- <laughs> t- four years ago. Now, obviously, everyone can keep saying COVID this and COVID that, but yeah. COVID's gone. COVID's gone. We're, we're, we're post-COVID now. Yeah, get on with it. What people And, and a, a lot of it comes down to the fact that we live in the UAE, and the UAE has... There's a fantastic interview that gets clipped every now and again. I see it on Instagram from time to time with Sheikh Mohammed um, bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is a, I think it's a US, it might even be something like oh, that's 60 the 20, minutes. That's the 20, I think that's, that is 60 minutes. Yeah, that's 60 and, he, minutes. and he's saying, why, why do you want, you know, this is a bit ambitious. The interviewer is saying, this is a bit ambitious. Why, you know, this, these sort of things take 200 years. He's like, yeah, no, but I want my people to have it now. What yeah. an attitude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but that attitude needs to be replicated now. Yeah. I understand he doesn't have to deal with a four-year election cycle. He doesn't have to only do two terms, and he doesn't have to. But he's got a vision, and he's yeah. implementing it. Yeah, yeah. And for good or for bad, and it's pretty good here, right? We're safe. We have everything. Like you know, there's trains flying around on on a on a rail in the sky, effectively, with no drivers on, and there's very few breakdowns on it, and it moves masses and masses of people. There's buildings, and there's ac everywhere and there's oases ever and, and it's an amazing place if they put their heads to it and they are starting to manufacture here there's a big push to manufacture but we're a small country 10 11 million population you know what a million uh, native population but they if they can push and say you know what we can't get any new cars and have you noticed how every showroom that opens up now is a is a chinese brand manufacturer why don't we make our own yeah. Why don't we go to people like Ford and say, what are you missing? 
Yeah. What are you missing? Can we build it for you? Look at Saudi. Look at the ambition there. Everybody's talking about it. All the big fights are happening there and all the big entertainment events are going there now. You've got huge, huge corporations, UFC, WWE, all involved with them over there. Why aren't other people involved? Jaguar Land Rover do their testing over there and in the empty quarter over here. Why aren't they involved? There, there must be some manufacturing voids that can be filled locally. And I come from the UK. And at Auto Mechanica, one of the more telling sides of it is you walked in and there's always a big Turkish presence. Turkish manufacturing yeah. is huge. And, and obviously we're in the region, so the Turkish section is massive. And the German section also obviously massive. The UK section had like four stands in it. That's and crazy. Nothing made there that's crazy. anymore. And and I was with Pete from Borg and Beck, as I've said, and 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 that's a British uh, first line is the company. And oh, thanks, James. And uh, <laughs> we've got, you know, that's yeah. a British company, but we're we're meeting with a, a factory in China. Yeah. The, the brains, the, the, the brains the guys, are coming from the UK, but the brawn is coming from you know other countries. Is, is, is it the brain? It's so short sighted. Yeah. Why are we making things locally? Why don't? And I, yeah. I genuinely believe that America's a good example because what is there? Three hundred and thirty million people in America, and they're they're, they're quite known. They're known for being patriotic. They put flags everywhere. This and that, and yeah. you know, they they really should be making their own cars. And I'm not saying go out and put propaganda everywhere and say, oh, don't buy a Volkswagen and don't buy a Mercedes and you know, don't buy a Toyota, don't buy a Kia, buy American. Because that, to be fair, is probably quite an attitude there for, for a lot of yeah. people anyway. But at least when you see a problem like this, that's it's going to cost them a lot of money, this. It's going to cost the whole economy, back, not back, just the back to the strike here. Yeah, yeah it's, this, this well, and it's all the ancillary things, right? And yeah. since it's it's parts and delivery on demand these days, it's everything. It's the well, shipping if I, guys. If I want a part for your Jeep, and we want the original because there's no other option, and they're not making them. The ones the price goes up. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But the value of a car is only going down <laughs> unless exactly. it's a. You know, it's an old classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The price of the value of the car is going down, but the yeah, cost yeah. of everything else is going up. But it's going up so much quicker than it ever has before. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, so. insane. It, it, it's just, it, yeah, it just makes you shake your head. And it's, you know, what's the option? Well, just, you know, carpool. Yeah, bus, somebody was saying that in. Get in, out of in, driving a car yeah. altogether. Someone was saying that in California, the fuel had gone up to like nearly $7 a gallon. I can't believe that. Ridiculous. I mean, pricing. I get it, but it's just, like, who could afford that? That's nearly UK prices. Yeah. Who can afford that? You can't afford that. I mean, it's it's same in the UK. People are paying that for fuel. They're deciding what are they going to have for dinner. It's beans yeah, on toast yeah. five days a week. Yeah, I mean that's what it, and it and it's you know you're you're deciding okay breakfast for the kids to make, hopefully they get it at school because we can't afford breakfast so we're going to have you know, put together their lunch right. but and we're going to have one we're going to have one meal a day. Yeah, and someone's going nah it's not like that it's, oh, it's like that it's in a lot of some, places. I think it was uh, I think it was Jordan Peterson that I heard say it. And I've heard other people say it actually to be in the top 1% globally you have to earn $34,000 a year. In right. terms of finances $34,000 wow. a year and you're in the top 1% globally. That, that's So if you in, Thirty-four thousand dollars a year—you can't live in, in, no, no, in the Western country, right? <laughs> You're pretty much struggling there. I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at what it's going to cost me to rent. Yeah, a place, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's going to cost me thirty thousand yeah. dollars a year. Yeah, just to rent. Yeah. So when you're talking, I mean, California seven. I mean, that seven dollars a a gallon must have been sort of in the L.A. Who knows this area? I would have thought, but whatever. The prices don't fluctuate but that they, much. They don't they fluctuate do, but like they, they do. Then. You know, what's rent in in California? Well, forget it. You can't afford to live there. You, you want to live? You want to live somewhere down by you know Santa Monica, where you know where you see in all the movies. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You, you, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you're not living there. So, so it is it's it's absolutely mental oh, that man. that that we're talking about. You know, problems where people aren't getting paid enough to make stuff. We, we need to make it. I think. Yeah. I think we need to make it. And, and and I know that's what the UAW guys are standing up for. United Auto Workers. They, you know, let's keep it here. Let's keep making it. But let's fair compensation for all we've put into this and all that's going to come. And yeah. we're with you. We're with you. But we need to. We also need to be get paid. Yeah. I mean, obviously they've gone in at forty percent expecting a negotiation. And yeah. They might take twenty, but I still think twenty. Where's that coming from? Twenty percent. That's got to be passed on to that's, somebody. That's a car I can't buy. 
yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and and then it, then it becomes the issue of okay, well, someone will buy the brand new cars, but I I'm going to be looking for a used car. It's going to take at least five years for that car to come into the used market. Yeah, I, and, and then I'm, I'm priced out of the automobile market. Yeah, yeah. They, they have to be they have to be quite careful because at the moment, if you take General Motors as the example, because you've got the three distinct brands of, and it's crazy that they're striking with all three. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah, all together, yeah. yeah. Never happened, has it? For, 140, since, has it been like 80 uh, years or something? Some since crazy it happened, like yeah. that. Yeah. 146,000 people yeah. are on strike. But if, if you take General Motors with Chevy, GMC, and uh, Cadillac, you can get effectively, just like with Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda, and Seat, you can get the same model car at different price yeah, points. Yeah. How expensive is your Cadillac going to be <laughs> if they have to get paid extra? I mean, <laughs> you know, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talk about aspirational brand. Yeah. That's you, like, you don't oh. be able to afford that car. And I want a Cadillac or I want a Lincoln, but okay, different, but you get the sense. I I mean, coming from North America, Cadillac or Lincoln, that's your aspiration. Okay. Yeah. You know, and you, and you got a, a Camaro in the, in the driveway Yeah, and maybe a Corvette and away we go. But that's, that's it. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be, I'm not going to be driving a Cadillac in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, um, I guess the root of it is obviously the inflation, right? Well, People can't, they're, they're paying 30,000 a year in, in rent then. Well, you rent and yeah. then you got your food prices are going up and yeah. inflation's hitting everyone. And of course we're blaming the, the, what's going on in the Ukraine. And that, you know, that has that's a, a That's a frightening one. When you consider the money that's been funneled oh, one way. Funneled one and way. And then there's, then there's and all of the 46,000 people wanting yeah. a pay rise. And then all of the grain supplements and all things that come out of that country yeah. that go to other places where they're making food stuffs, ultra processed foods that we rely on, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, it's, and, and just the money that's going there. Yeah. It is. It's very strange times. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very strange. It's, uh, it's interesting. Gives people lots to talk about, but yeah. I mean, it worried me. I mean, back to it, it just worried me with, with the state of the, of the industry the amount of conversations i've had with customers over parts prices recently yeah. you know we've had customers and we don't penalize them a lot of places and understandably so we'll say if you bring your own parts we'll charge you more labor because yeah yeah, yeah we're yeah. missing out on a bit of margin on the of course we make a bit of money on parts one thing that's un, necessarily not necessarily known that well here is that unlike let's say europe which is the market i'm familiar with from the uk if I buy a part, I have a warranty on it, regardless right. of where it's installed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As long as it's been fitted correctly, yeah. and I have a receipt for that, okay. I have a warranty on it. I don't get that. If really? I buy a part for your car, I don't get a warranty. Well, on you it. you buy a part from, in my case, I drive a Wrangler, so you're going over to Jeep Chrysler. Yeah. You buy a part. There's no warranty nope. on it. They won't give me warranty. Oh on come it. on. <laughs> now, how far I could push that with Chrysler Middle East? Yeah. I don't know, but, but then the solution is, okay, bring the car in. Uh-huh. take the car in they want 3,000 dirhams because they've not seen the car for so long they have yeah. to do a full inspection of it <gasps> yeah so I've gonna... got to pay them 3,000 dirhams to get warranty on a 400 dirham part yeah so no one's going to do that and well that's then people don't appreciate that so no. when when I buy a part and we put a small margin on it to make the money on it we have to hope that because again human error happens people make these yeah. parts human error ha- happens if they're fitted incorrectly we have to give you a warranty. So if I do a job on your car and then, you know, something goes wrong with that in the first six, 12 months, I'm going to give you warranty on it. You're going to bring it back, but I've not got warranty from my supplier. So right. I've got to hopefully have pulled enough money from the hundred other jobs to have covered the cost of that. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah, it does. I, hurt. I don't think people realize that. No. And the prices are going so, so expensive. Yeah. So if you have a margin of 15%, 15% on 100 dirhams is 15 dirhams, but 15% on 500 dirhams, all of a sudden you're talking yeah. 75, and it's like, hang on a minute. Well, and, and I have that experience with a, a, a silly part, the cover for the yeah. coolant plastic. overflow. Yeah, yeah. A little plastic cover that's essentially like your water bottle, 75 dirhams, 75 dirhams. Now, and, and I know someone just said you could probably get the whole, you know, yeah. that tank. Oh, no, no, no. That's that's like five, 600 dirhams. Yeah for this piece of molded plastic yeah. that, which is ridiculous because you know that it, it costs to make about 50 fills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely. As a, as an individual unit cost and the amount they've made, yeah. it's 50 fills maybe. Yeah. 
And it, and it's it's insane, yeah. insane. It's a, it's difficult. DJ was in here pulling his hair out the other day. On the same day, we had three customers that had complained about parts prices. Yeah. Now, one of them was a little bit out of context, and when we'd been through it, we realised what had happened. And it was a customer had had a price on the job at the end of last week or so a week ago, and then they would proved it on the on the on the afternoon of the Friday. They'd gone out on a Saturday with their friends to brunch, mentioned it, and, oh, that's too high, blah, blah, yeah. bring it to always, my guy. Always, always happens. Their Everyone's garage, got a guy. Their garage sends them a quote. And it was like, from our quote of 9K, theirs was five. Now, we aren't the most expensive guys in the world. We're not the cheapest either, but we're not that's double a lot. the cost that, of anything. So how, how did they have such a... So when we worked it out and went through it, what had happened is they, they listed a, a they, they'd got a compressor on there for AC. It was a GLE Mercedes and they got a compressor on there, which was their selling price was less than what I was buying the one that we were selling for. Huh. Fortunately, I knew this garage and I knew the owner well and we knew where he got his quote from. There were three variations of model for compressor. Yeah. So we quoted it we got the vehicle in and we'd physically got the matching sample and yeah, we yeah. got the right one they'd taken the middle of the three and priced it so then it, so had the car gone there anyway they'd have ended up with the more expensive one yeah so <sighs> obviously it's all right saying that to a customer yeah. easy for me to say she'd already approved the work and we'd already done the work yeah in the end me and dj just ended up saying look we'll do the parts at cost and we'll you've been a customer of ours but it turns out You've obviously got a friend in another garage, so you're not going to come back to us anyway. Why would you? You've got a friend. Yeah. You're going to support your friend, which is, yeah, again, yeah. understandable. So we weren't she, gonna... might, she might come back because you've been honest with her. And Well, we can only do what we can do. And at the end of the day, she's going to go there, and yeah, they give you an, you know, you get the estimate, and then when you finally get the part, oh, you know, it's... it's... We'd also got more work scope on it, so okay. they, they, in fairness, hadn't, again, hadn't seen the car. The, 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 right. the compressor had failed mechanically. Yeah. So we had to flush the whole system out. Now, when we do that, all of the lines that we can remove, we do remove. So there's a lot of labor. There was about right. 1,200 dirhams in, in labor and flushing right. on it. So Which people, again, never realize when you've got these yeah, things. Yeah, which, again, if it goes to that garage, again, I said I know them, so they will do the job right. Yeah. So they'd have said, oh, we need to do this as well. And then all of a sudden, it's... it's you know, the same price. Yeah. So, but, you know, uh, BMW X5, the guy's going to go... It was funny. <laughs> okay, so what's so, going on with the BMW so he, X5? His rear air suspension <laughs> failed, but oh, he no. also had issues on his front mechanical suspension. Oh, no. There's a quote. I think our quote was it was over 10K. Oh, yeah. A lot of parts needed. There was some other electrical stuff as well. And he said, look, I'm just going to put the job on hold. Yeah, I get that. Like, I, you know, I, I, I can't. Yeah, and like we said to him, if you do it bit by bit, you're going to double up on paying labour. So at the end of it, you're going to pay more. Now that's fine for us. Yeah, but we're not doing you a service if we don't tell you that. Right. I don't want you to not spend ten now, and then over the next six months spend twenty, because we're charging you the labour every single time to yeah. do the same work. Because you're doing part by part. So I just said to him, look, he, he said, I'm going to take the car back. I've got to travel next week, so I'll take it out of your hair, and I'll come back and we'll figure it out. When he said he was traveling, I said, look, why don't you just buy the parts out, out overseas? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's options for you there. Buy them overseas and bring them in. So that's what he's doing. And, you know, our market here is basically, by the time it gets towards, it's on its third, sometimes fourth markup. Which is crazy. Even from the dealer. The dealers are buying from their Middle East yeah. entity. So, so there's there's two markups by the time it's at the dealer. So they're yeah. selling it to us. We're putting a third with a, you know with the third markup. Yeah, and then we're selling it to the customer. So parts are a lot cheaper outside of the country. So people that travel a lot of people do travel for work from here. Yeah. They'll bring them back in, which you know again we don't penalise people for that. We're all in this together, right? We've got <laughs> we've got to get it done, and we're much better off getting the actual car fixed and getting the labor time out of it and having the customer come back then saying no or we're going to charge you double labor charges and yeah. they don't come back ever again yeah so it's oh, it's very very tough for bread milk and car parts i think it's just <laughs> you know the, the sort of three critical things you need living here well you, you know i hate i hate buying stuff for my cars i mean it, look I, it, you know they're 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 not new we you keep them running thank you you and tj <laughs> you keep them running they're they're safe but you know they're they're old cars and uh 
So we, this is the funny one and, and how I'm leading into this is the, the conversation you hate having with people. So you weren't here, I drive up with DJ and I go, uh, Jeep sounded like it's got a turbocharger now. <laughs> and, and basically the wife actually noticed, she says, uh, you know, the car's making a really weird noise. And she goes, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but it, it can't be good. So I put up the hood and I'm listening. Oh, it sounds like maybe a belt or it, I mean, it was a, it was, it was a bearing kind yeah. of sound. You know, that was <laughs> rotational. Yeah. Let's bring it in. DJ, I said, you know, we talked with DJ catching up and said, you know, would you just give it, give it a listen? It sounds like a turbo. And he's going, yeah, your car doesn't have a turbo. So that's not a good thing. He gets out the stethoscope. He goes, yeah, you know, it's clearly, it's the, uh, it's, it's a bearing on your alternator. And yeah. he says, you know, it, it could last a long time. So like that. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and he said, look, if it was me with, the, and again, this is a conversation you never want to have with people. Yeah. If it's me, I'd leave it and wait till it goes. And I was like, okay. Barely made it. I mean, we get, went and pick up the wife, we go out for lunch. It's all parked. Get back in the car, drive to another place. It's, you know, valet parks it, get the car back from the valet, driving home, failed. Should have blamed the valet. Like <laughs> That's what else I was <laughs> Fails. And I mean, it was, it was an epic failure because it, DJ's only instruction was if the battery light comes on, you know, you're done. Battery light comes on. Don't. And then I, so I stopped the car, turn it back on. Battery light goes off. I'm going, we're good to go for a little bit longer. So we do. And, uh, we're about, and I, I sent you that text. We're probably yeah. about 500 meters from the house at a set of lights turning all sorts of warning lights start coming on and I'm going, Oh no, this is not good. And then we're doing a U-turn cause I'm, I'm seeing the warning lights and I, but I'm looking at the, the temperature gauge. Cause all I'm thinking is if we can just get a little bit further I see some lights wrong, but I'm looking at the temperature gauge and I'm just going, you know, is it, get it, it. I literally get home. It hasn't started going bing, bing, none of that yet. But every, at one point, just as I'm driving up to my place, I'm literally rolling into the driveway. I've never seen so many lights come on. <laughs> and at that moment, the car just stops. Like, I mean, every light goes off and the car just, it was basically someone at Jeep said, you dumbass, we know that you're going to keep driving with every light and you'll even keep driving if it's binging. So we're yep. not, we are not going to let you do that. We put a fail safe <laughs> in that when it gets to this point, everything will be disabled. And and it was, and it did, it disabled everything. And I thought, oh no, this is not good. And near what I could figure was at that point, knowing what had happened, the, the alternator must've seized or the, the bearing, yeah, yeah. or it slowed it down enough that it wasn't getting enough flow of water into the engine. It was still flowing clearly, but not enough. So it's going, we got a terminal error here. We're going to, we're going to lose this vehicle. We can't trust this driver. Turn it off. And it was, it was the next day when the recovery guy comes to get it. Oh, oh, it, so it was parked badly in the driveway. I had to get the other Jeep out and pull it. Nice. So the wife was in it, but there's no power. So the wife, <sighs> the wife's in that one and I've got the tow rope on it just slowly as she's like manually. And this is effectively still the height of the summer. Yeah. It's horrible. Well, I was going to push it. Well, the wife says, well, you can just push it. And I, and I start pushing and, and I just go, no, I'm like, I'm like, it, it's like 45, 46. I'm sweating. I'm going, <laughs> and, and there's nothing. I'm just, oh, so I get the other Jeep, put the tow rope on it. Say, would you mind just getting in? And, and again, and now everything's hot. And I just slowly maneuvered it. But it was the next day, the recovery guy comes, he puts the key in, starts it up and drives it onto the recovery truck. And I'm going, well, the sensors that had time and, yeah, it's and cooled down, the bearings probably yeah. shrunk down a bit. Yeah. And I just thought that is the, so the, the message from this is it's the worst conversation you ever want to have. Right. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll just leave it. And then eight hours later, I got a voice note from a customer this morning. It's a friend, not fair, not fair to call him just a customer. And he has a Range Rover. Um, he's got a steering rack leak. Oh yeah. So it's like 10 K for the rack or whatever ridiculous amount of money it was. I can't remember. You know, I get to that point where it's going to be a 10 K repair. It's like, you know, it's not worth repairing my car anymore. Uh, <laughs> you know, like most Range Rover owners, there is blind love with them. Yeah. Really well, that, and that's the Jeep and thing it's the same too. With the Wranglers actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People are like that with Wranglers, but you know, the, 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 the steering rack is so expensive and there's a lot of money being spent on this car and it has no residual value really. 25, 30, 35 K maybe it. So, what he did, he bought a uh, an additive, which oh, is okay. one of those leak stop additives. Okay. Bought it from the US, which you know, big deal <laughs> in America. Yeah, we've got all those things. Yeah, 
And um, it slowed the leak down. Yeah. So fantastic, right? And I, I, I just, and, and he suggested, he said, and quite, you know, nicely of him, said, why don't you buy some of this? I found it online. You buy some, it's relatively inexpensive and it'll save people, even if, because he wasn't fixing it anyway. He was just topping his oil up. Yeah. But, you know, sort of save the environment from wasting oil and save you money from 200 dirhams a litre or whatever it is, Land Rover steering oil. Put some of this in it. I think he said it cost him like four dollars. Yeah. So whatever. Um, the issue is with stop leak stuff like that. The way it works most of the time, it thickens up the oil a little bit. Yeah. Which isn't ideal. But it conditions the seals. So there's a, com- uh, a, a, a component of it which makes the seals a little bit softer and they puff up almost. Yeah. We use an oil called Crytox oil on the convertible roofs on Volkswagens, and I'm talking about, you know, you could have. It rained in the UK, and it would run in on some of the EOS roofs sometimes. You put, you open the roof, set it in service position, clean all the seals with soapy water, dry them, put Crytox oil on it, close it back up after a couple of hours, put it back out in the rain, and it won't leak. Wow. Like, it genuinely put... And we're talking about such fine tolerances on yeah. engineered components that a fraction of a millimetre of, of difference... It's going to seal a yeah. seal. So that's great. But the problem is it doesn't last forever. <laughs> and it also keeps the rubber supple to the point where it's likely and more liable to fail catastrophically right. rather than... <laughs> now, it's different on a roof because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just a roof. Yeah, but this is steering we're but talking. But it's something that's got masses of pressure going through it yeah. at times when that fails that, and and so as a as a garage owner you can have this conversation with a customer and say Look, we could try this for you it might save you for a couple of weeks might not might not improve things at all might save you for a few months and in those three months maybe you can budget to save money for buying the steering rack which you yeah. inevitably will need if you keep in the car yeah to take the risk without that conversation and even with that conversation of well it was dripping yesterday but now it's pouring out yeah since you put that (laughs) chemical stuff in (laughs) it's gotten worse yeah so obviously then we're sort of implicated in the demise yeah so it's very difficult like you say that is a bad conversation to have with with anybody like might work it might not because you don't know you genuinely don't know and and look it's it's you know, but beware of your advice. You're asking a mechanic. The the car breaks down at the side of the road. The mechanic's going to know what to do to fix it. Yeah, it's different. It's yeah. totally different. But I mean, you still want the advice, but just make sure you understand that the advice is tempered in the knowledge of the person yeah. who's giving it. Yeah. So anyway, it got sorted. Tell you a different, in another way as well, and you can answer this honestly, James, or as honestly as you want. If you're in the car on your own and it breaks down, it's not that much of a deal, is it? If no. you're going somewhere and you're late or whatever, it's not yeah, bad. Yeah. But when you've got someone else in the car, particularly your wife, who knows what that is? That's, a, that's my phone. Someone's telling the battery is dying. Yeah. yeah that's... Um, <laughs> particularly it's your wife it's or your partner. Nice. It's, it's, it's very nice when you're doing a podcast. Yeah, it sounds uh, like uh, we're uh, genuinely uh, in a, uh, like uh, an old school uh, garage. We are. It's ringing. It's ringing there. You've hope, got all the technology to I remove. Hope it stops. No, <laughs> I can't remove that. <laughs> <laughs> but we... Um, when you've got someone else in the car with you, yeah. what a oh, nightmare. That's it. What I don't mind nightmare. if it's me. Yeah. Or if Especially it's... when it's like, you went to the garage today. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going there this morning. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. And then... well, I, but I gave, I did give my wife the complete rundown of what DJ said. And he said, if that light comes on, and, it's, and it was like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> what's the matter? Yeah. Light came on. <laughs> it's like, she goes, that is bad luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it could have been worse. It, it, and that's what we said in that whole incident when, when all this came on. It could have failed at the turn. Yeah. That was fully backed up with traffic. And I'm in the turning lane. And how would yeah, it, yeah. I mean, that would have been. Yeah. The amount of cars we've recovered from traffic lights and yeah. U turns and all sorts. I mean, this would have been horrible mm. because I would have been the guy out there trying to push it. And, you know, no one's going to be helping me. They're going to be beeping their horns. And it would have been terrible. Yeah. I remember when we had a. We were doing an MOT. In, on a car in VW and we used to do like 25 pound MOTs which was sort of half the price um, there's a minimum charge now that you have to charge for an MOT but we do like half price deal so everyone would take it to the dealer yeah. and we we had a polo in I think it was and 
we failed it because the boot, the rubber boot over the CV joint had split yeah. on one, whichever side it was, I don't know. And we've given the customer a price. Yeah. Oh, no, it's too expensive. I'll do that myself. That was, let's say, the Wednesday. And then the Thursday morning, it's back in <laughs> for a retest. The guy had put a new rubber boot on it. So we drove it in onto the onto the MOT ramp. And the MOT ramp was sort of perpendicular to the to the traffic flow in the workshop. So you got like a full 90 degree turn to get it on and off. So car goes on the ramp, checks. Yep, yeah, done. Retest, pass. Reverse off the ramp. <laughs> and as we make the full lock turn to get left, the joint just falls out of the CV, out of the drive shaft. The guy had obviously whacked the hell out of it and yeah. it not put the lock ring back in or he'd broken the lock ring and it just fell apart on him on us in the middle of the workshop so then what do you do yeah what do you do at that point I don't even put it back together and pretend it didn't happen and it's like well we you know we tried to offer you the solution you've taken it upon yourself to fix it and happy days it's now in the middle of the workshop in a pile of grease and everyone's shouting oh. at it because it's in the way I, I had another aha moment or another celebratory moment with with my own vehicle it was it was testing time uh, I did take the side windows out because they were a little foggy but the, the nightmare was we go to a couple of Taz Geals, which is the testing guys here, uh, five bays, eight cars in the line on oh. each. We go to another one, same thing. And I'm just going, this is ridiculous. So I abandon it at that point. I just say, you know what? I, I, I'm weeks ahead of the testing period. And I, and, and I say, you know what? I'm just going to do my old school. I'm going to go to the Arabian center up in Kalanish. They, there's a, a third party that does it there. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And they've just expanded their test site to two bays. Nice. And I get there. And so I'm there at like seven o'clock in the morning when it opens because I'm thinking I got to be there. There's two cars in the bays getting done. There's no one behind me. And I say to the guy, I said, Oh man, it must get really busy here at night. He goes, nah, Not really. Now we've got two bays and we, you know, we, yeah, there's maybe a couple cars ahead of you. But he said, It's not like, it's not like going to the testing centers and they do the same stuff. Yeah, they do the, exactly the same stuff. So it was uh, happy days. Yeah. So if if anyone's listening to this podcast and you're here, fire yourself over to Arabian Center over Murdiff County. We get more and more people asking us, or uh, you know, allowing us to take their car in for tests for them. It's oh. such a hassle. It's such, <laughs> because people didn't have to do it during COVID. During yeah, during yeah, COVID, right? Yeah. yeah. So you got used to oh yes because <laughs> it can like especially when it fails because oh. you just don't know what to do then after yeah. that. There was a guy, and I, I when I got the red one, and I'm gonna have to get you to check because there's some tire wear, <laughs> abnormal tire wear, and I don't want to put new tires on it, but I might have to. <laughs> uh, there was a guy ahead of me who came out, and they failed his car because of the tires. Yeah. And nearest I can figure, because I was, you know, you're standing there kind of looking, and I'm, and, you know, and he was looking too, and he wasn't happy. But uh, nearest I can figure is he bought new tires, but they must have been a really super deal because they were really close to the expiry date. That's how he got dinged because the tires look, they look brand new to me. Yeah. Like not even just shined up with some armor all. Like these were yeah. new, newish tires, and and yeah. that's what he got failed for. They're, they're getting. They've always been quite strict on tires. Last sort of seven eight years, aren't they? But they're getting strict on modifications now. Oh yeah, there were. That's why they look at me and they say, "Oh gee, oh this is. Oh, you haven't done yeah. anything yours." We, we <laughs> had a a Golf R that failed because the customer had put air suspension on it. Oh. And they failed it. Wow. Then what do you do? You got to take the air suspension. Yeah, put your standard springs back on. I don't know. How would they even know? I guess they can see. The see yeah. 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 Well, that's mod, the mods. They're, they're all over it now. Yeah. They were over stickers for a while, but this is yeah, more is important. The little, stickers yeah, were, were silly. Great. I mean, I think one of the problems with the stickers was the people that were having a little bit of a yeah. bit close to the bone with some of the stuff they had on there, right? Yeah. But yeah, uh, you, want to, you want to get these stickers, James. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Hold on. Bluey. You, you've not got young kids, have you? <laughs> no. You're out of this now, but there's a kids' program called Bluey from Australia. <laughs> I do not have that. I'm... But they're going on the R32 for when, it gets okay. ready, when it's ready when it's ready for Amy to use. Very nice. But yeah, you can't you can't be having stickers that are right. offensive. No. Uh, we, you know, we got to wrap this up, but we're going to we're gonna pick up the next show. But I want to I wanna just for a second just jump really quickly through my summer car rental, oh, which yeah. was uh, a Mitsubishi ASX or AXS or ASX, X- yeah. <laughs> Mr. Vichier are right this, aren't they, at the minute? Well, I've always it, it was just it was okay. Like it, it, it was one of those guys. It looked kind of nice. It had four wheel drive, thankfully, but 
the suspension wasn't really made for four-wheel drive. It was good for river crossing. I was in Costa Rica. Nice. Got to a point at one point, literally, I'm going somewhere, and I'm on the road, and <laughs> we get there, and there, there is a river. And I'm, I'm literally stopped. You've stopped. I've stopped, and I'm looking. <laughs> And this guy in a pickup truck comes up beside me and, and he does the head nod. He says, follow me. <laughs> and he, he knows where to cross. And thankfully he did because, you know, we drove down the bank on stones, you know, I've got it in four wheel at this point and we're driving through the water and I'm just going, thank God it hasn't rained because I'm not sure this vehicle, even though it was lifted a little bit, would have made it. But the yeah, problem with it's small and light, aren't they? And, and, and the suspension was a city <laughs> suspension, not... So we're hitting some dirt roads. Not got any travel on it or anything. We're hitting no. dirt roads with potholes. So there was this one route. We're going to the airport, dropping my son back at the airport. It's, it's probably about a it's, it's a two and a half hour trip. Oh. An hour is on a pothole road. This sounds like a Top Gear challenge. Oh, and and you're driving on. You, you know, it's it's exhausting because you're weaving back and forth trying to find the right line and you can see where people are going to miss. Yeah. But even missing the potholes, you still hit the potholes because there's so, so many. many. And all I kept thinking was, you know, this is a new car. <laughs> it was. I'm trashing it. It was. I said, I'm trashing the thing. <laughs> the suspension is just getting hammered because of this. And I just went, and you know, river crossings, there was three and it was, and, and, oh, and then one time we crossed the river, someone else in, in a rental and you can see where they've stormed. They just thought we're going to, yeah, there they are at the other yeah. side. That car's finished. But the wife's looking, oh, they, I guess they went, the wife's like, oh, no, no, no. The, the river's deep enough that yeah. they sucked in. They sucked water in. Yeah. That, that car's over. done. Bye that bye. car's done. Yeah. And it was, so it was, so the, the, I left the, I always thought those cars looked cool. I wouldn't buy one. I mean, it was nice. I just, yeah, I, got I, I couldn't own it. I couldn't own it. It's so frustrating. I, uh, coming from the sort of era I came from in the UK and the way that the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, the rally car yeah. was so revered and is revered yeah, yeah. for very good reason. And then you, they're making this tripe. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. That is ridiculous. I went and yeah. there's, there's a multivan on the ramp in there and I went and transferred the ownership from, from the guy whose company owned it yesterday. He was talking to me, he's got a Ford Explorer, and he's like, I used to have a Jaguar XK, so it's the worst car I've ever owned, but it's the best car I've ever owned. He's yeah. so much fun, he's like, I just constantly have to fix it. He says, this yeah. Ford is so boring. I was like, people ask us what car to buy, and yeah. I tell them buy a Ford Explorer. Yeah. If you don't want to buy a Pajero, and yeah. Yeah. write the rest of your time of enjoying driving off. Yeah. And he was like, I'm never having a Pajero. He said, they're so boring. He's like, yeah. I felt like sitting just, in a retirement home. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, yeah. You, you get what what uh, price point I guess yeah what what do you want from a car piece easy Pete to took fix. me to auto mechanic the other day and and he had a Mitsubishi Outlander which is a rental you know leather interior yeah they're nice front and rear camera yeah yeah but phew, you don't uh, it's no. tinny and you shut yeah, yeah. the door and it's like yeah yeah <laughs> that was this ASX it was it was yeah it was but it's a rental right? it's a rental yeah. so you know maybe they've saw they've seen sorry that that's where we can get rid of volume in the rental Maybe. sector because the rental sector is crazy. Yeah. It's insane. Everywhere you go, there's rental car companies. Well, let's talk so. about rentals next time. Yeah. And we'll talk about Joey Woo Woo and more and catch up again. This has been, it, Glenn, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, Glenn, back on it. We're back on it. Glenn Power, PowerWorks Garage is where you can find him. I'm James Pikeway and this is the PowerWorks Podcast.